This is just one piece on a multi-part course on designing characters inside of Animate CC. Pre-order on Toon Files and receive 20% off. Link is in the description. We're going to continue now, building down, starting with the neck, and then going to the body. Let's create the neck on a separate layer. You might find at some point you want to put it onto the same layer as the torso. It depends on how you plan to rig this up and animate it. But it doesn't hurt to separate things out and then combine them later on if you need to. It's easier to separate things out in the beginning and then combine them later as opposed to the opposite of that. So let's create a new layer. And this is going to be called neck. Next, we're going to grab the line tool. Make sure we set this to 6.5. And we'll start with the neck right here. We're just going to come in and draw out what we see. So come down like this and that. We can bring it over, up and then over just like this. There we go. So now we can go in using the tools that we've been using before with our selection tool as an example to bend the lines so that they aren't as jagged. So let's come in here and kind of make these modifications just like that. Kind of bring that in a little bit. And then you can adjust the bottom. The bottom will probably be adjusted anyway once we add in the other things. But for right now, that should work. Now, there is the matter of the top. And with the neck, it might not be as important. It kind of depends on how big the head is and where the position of the head is. But it's always best to round off certain portions of your character so that way it's easier to rotate them when it comes time to parent and then animate symbols inside of animate. So with this neck still selected, I'm going to grab the shape tool and then come over here to the fill color and switch that to transparent. We're going to keep the 6.5 stroke height and then coming over here near the top of the neck, I'm going to hold in shift so that way I can create a perfectly round circle. And I'm just going to come in here like this and connect it like so. So now we have a rounded edge at the top for the neck and that will allow our head to sort of have a pivot point for when it turns and moves up and down. With the neck out of the way, let's move down to the torso. Create a new layer, and I can name this one torso or body or shirt. There's actually going to be technically two torso layers because we'll have the torso itself, which is just, you know, the blue shirt underneath, and then we'll have the jacket, which will go over the top. So that way, if you wish, you can animate the jacket separately, you can remove the jacket, that sort of thing. So with the torso selected, let's begin the process of outlining the body. With the sketch, we can only really see what the outline looks like without the body itself being isolated. So we're seeing the jacket. So we're gonna have to take a little bit of liberty here when it comes to creating the width and size of the torso. So that way we can create a jacket that complements. So let's begin here. I'm just going to grab the line tool and let's make sure the neck is locked. And then we can come in and I'll start near the top of the front arm and just draw this over like that. There we go. Hit V and then round up the line so that way it matches what we have on the sketch. Come back here, grab the end tool and we're just going to bring it down about like that and we can release. So now grab the V key and just bend this out using the selection tool. And looking at this, I might wanna grab that bottom line and actually just kind of bring it over more like that so that it's closer to the pelvis down here than not. But we don't want it to be the same width as the jacket. And actually looking at this, I might just bring it over a little bit more so that it matches the line work of the pelvis going down like so. Now we can grab the end tool once again, just come in here and go all the way across. And then we can also move this up 
And we can even bring it over so that it matches the line work right here, just like that. So I'll come in here now with the selection tool and we're just gonna round some things off. And you'll see here that we have sort of a dip in the back and then it rounds out. We're probably gonna need an extra point for this. So let's grab the pen tool and let's make sure that we have the add anchor point tool selected for that. And we're just gonna come in here and just add a point like so. Now we can come back here to the selection tool and just keep moving. We can locate that point. Again, it will be a right angle once you locate it and we can kind of bring it over like so. So now we should have the ability to pretty easily here just come in and looking at the line work here, maybe bring that out just a little bit, bring this in a tad, and then bring this one out like this so that we can create that nice rounded back that we had with the original design. Speaking of design, the shirt also has a design. You can see I roughly sketched it in right here, and you can see it through the opening of the jacket. I know we haven't designed the jacket yet, but that will become more clear once we get to that point. So while we're on this layer, we can go in and create this design. Now, if you want, you could actually make it on a separate layer and then combine the layers when you're done if you don't want to accidentally interrupt the design of the torso. So to demonstrate that, let's just create a new layer. I'm not even going to name it because it's just a temporary layer. And we can create an oval using the oval tool. When we select the oval tool, let's make sure that we have a 6.5 line width that the width profile view is still going to be the same. So that way we're not doing anything too different. And we want the fill color to be transparent with a black stroke. So I'm just going to come in here and begin the process of drawing this out. And also let's lock the torso so that way we don't accidentally modify it. Now that I have an oval, I can take my selection tool and kind of come in here and just start to modify the shape of it however I see fit to get it close to what I want. Now I want this to have a center as well, so we'll grab the oval tool once again and just come in and draw out an oval like so. And again, I'm not holding in shift for this. It doesn't have to be a perfect oval. It can be basically whatever you want. <laughs> but in my case, I'm just sort of just adding some freehand ovals, so that way we can add to the design. Next, we're going to touch on these spokes. So we have these spokes coming out on the top, three on the top and three on the bottom, and then that will complete this portion of the shirt design. Let's grab the line tool and we can zoom in. And we're just going to start at the top here. Come in and just create a shape like that. Same right here. And then we can do this one right here. And then come down and do the same for these. Now again, we've talked about this before. The more complex something gets with this line profile, it can sometimes not work the way we want it. I don't really like the way the line work is looking beneath those points. So let's just grab the selection tool, I'm going to select this piece of the line, hold and shift, and just keep selecting those pieces that are not really appealing to me. And let's just come over here and turn off the profile for that width. So that way, those pieces right there don't have that issue, but we still have, for the most part, a sketchy look with how everything else is shaping up. And of course, as I've discussed, you can go in and do manual line width corrections. So that way you can really hone in and get a more personalized style. But I think this should work for what we need. So there's a couple more things we can do here. First, let's click on this design that we just created. You can do that by clicking on layer six. And we're gonna use Command or Control X, depending on your operating system, to cut. Come back here to the torso and then use Control Shift V or Command Shift V if you're on Mac to paste in place and make sure that you unlock the layer, otherwise you won't be able to paste. And this will now put that design onto the torso layer so that way it's all one and 
Again, it allows us to combine it, but we were able to design it without having any interference with that other layer. So that's why we did it that way. So now we have this blank layer, layer six. We can actually use that for the belt buckle right down here. That'll be our final little exercise for this video. I'll just quickly rename this one to buckle. And if you don't have this layer anymore, no worries, just make a new layer. That's all you need to do. Then we can grab the line tool and start to draw out our cat. I'm going to try to use the profile one line width again to see how this works. It might be a little bit too complicated and it might, you know, do some things we don't want, but we'll see. And since this is a smaller design, I am going to kick back my width to, let's say, four and a half. We'll see how it looks. That's not too bad. So we'll start here. I'm just going to draw in my lines. Just like that. Taking your selection tool, you can come in and start to modify. So that way you're getting what you need here. I'm just going to add a little bit of curvature to this. There we are. Come back to the line tool. Kind of come down like that. And that as well. Hit V and we're just going to modify just like that. Then line tool again, come down like so. Come back here to my selection tool. I'm just going to move that one down a little bit and then bend it just like that. And I might need to move that one down just a little bit more just to meet what I'm trying to do here. There we go. Go back here to the line tool. I'm just going to make a point like this. And then we can kind of round some things off here just like that. Just bring, bring that over a little bit more. Just making sure everything is looking as best as we can get it. So now we can go into the finer details of the character, belt buckle face here. So let's just grab the line tool and I'm gonna reduce the line width to two. We'll see how that goes. And we'll come in here and just start to basically modify this a bit. So there's that one. There's that one. And I'm not sure if I touched on this, but you'll notice whenever I'm drawing, I have this like magnetic effect where basically when I draw on something, it's kind of grabbing the nearest point to draw off of it. And that can sometimes be difficult when you're trying to get the exact positioning that you want with your lines. It's nice when you're connecting lines, but sometimes you don't want it. And if that's the case, it's kind of hard with my toolbar here because of my screen resolution, but you'll see at the bottom of my toolbar, I have this magnet icon. It's called snap to objects. You can turn that off at any time if you want no attachment to other lines or shapes, if you just want a very freehand effect. So anyway, with that, let's come over here and zoom in, try to get these eyes rounded up. Perhaps kind of more like this and oops, grab that one and move it up a little bit more. Something like that probably looks a little bit better. Let's kind of shape it up like so. Do the same thing here. Let's kind of round it up, down, kind of bring it down like that. And I guess we could just combine those just like that. Kind of gives it a nice look for the eyes. There we are, just kind of reshaping things a little bit to get it more in line with the other one uh, across from here. And might just move that over like that. Okay, next is the nose. So we can come in here and just do that. Round some things off. About like that should be fine. Then line tool. 
just going to do a some line work for the smile there. There we are. Okay. And I would say the last thing we need to do here is just add the whiskers. So we'll grab the line tool. We're going to change the line width to one since the whiskers are less of a detail that we really need to see. And we don't want them to be as dominant as the lines for the face, just so we have more emphasis on certain areas. And I'm actually going to come in here and deselect the magnet option, just like that. So that way I have more of a freehand approach here. And I'm just going to come in and just kind of add some whiskers like that. Try that again. Here we are. Okay. You can go in and make any modifications you wish. If you want, you could even maybe just round them off a little bit. Kind of like that. There we go. It's not looking too bad. Okay, so now we have the cat buckle in place. The belt buckle that is, and if we just zoom out here, we can see kind of what that looks like, and it's not looking too bad. All right, we now have the torso pieces in. We'll pause here, and up next, move on to designing the jacket.